Hello, I'm Dr. Stephen Gray, and I'm currently relocating my lab to the University of Texas Southwestern Medical Center, where I'll be an associate professor in the Department of Pediatrics. I'm excited to say that the Angelman Syndrome Foundation is funding me to begin a new project to investigate gene therapy as a treatment for Angelman Syndrome. This has been a growing um, area of excitement in the field uh, for neurological diseases lately, especially with very encouraging transformative uh, treatment results in a clinical trial for spinal muscular atrophy. As an introduction to my own work, uh, the last 10 years of my career have been focused on developing gene therapy approaches for neurological diseases and translating those treatments into human patients. I've successfully moved one approach for a rare disease called giant axonal neuropathy from concept through bench research and ultimately to the treatment of eight children at the National Institutes of Health in a phase one clinical trial. These trials for spinal muscular atrophy and giant axonal neuropathy are now providing a template or a roadmap to design nervous system gene therapy treatments and move them into patients. So now on to Angelman syndrome, the reason why we're all here. Um, what I'm essentially doing is to mimic the approaches that were successful for spinal muscular atrophy and giant axonal neuropathy. But instead of delivering the genes for those diseases, we'll deliver the gene for UBE3A. The approach is to use the outer shell of a harmless virus called AAV and use that shell as a molecular mail truck to deliver the UBE3A gene. Um, these viral particles can be injected into the spinal fluid where they'll get carried across um, neurons in the brain and the spinal cord. Uh, this would be one injection leading to permanent restoration of UBE3A in all of the targeted cells. I'm excited about this approach and its potential to be a transformative treatment for Angelman syndrome. Uh, if our laboratory experiments work, we have a reasonably clear path to move this approach into human testing. However, I want to use this opportunity to make two very important points. One is I don't envision this as a cure for Angelman syndrome. This is a treatment. The best we can do is to treat a portion of the neurons across the brain. Uh, and it's hard to predict how much kids would benefit from this. This is the limitation of the version of the AAV mail truck that we're using, uh, but it's an active area of research of my lab to develop better AAVs to deliver the gene to more cells. Um, two, quite frankly, a lot can go wrong. Uh, I've, if we put um, the wrong amount of, of the UBE3A gene in the wrong places, it could have unintended consequences, including making the disease worse. Could make it much worse. So, uh, so from this, um, we're taking a cautious approach to first try to look at what our limitations might be, see how much freedom uh, we have to move forward uh, aggressively towards a treatment. Our approach with this grant from the Angelman Syndrome Foundation is really just initially to, to explore the feasibility of gene therapy. We want to quickly find out what our limitations are so we can chart the right path forward in what I hope will, be, will eventually become a transformative treatment for the disease. I'm a newcomer to Angelman syndrome and I can't do this effort alone. So to help bring me into the fold uh, to the Angelman syndrome community, I've partnered with a long-standing collaborator of mine, Dr. Ben Philpot at the University of North Carolina. Um, ben has worked in, in uh, Angelman syndrome research for a number of years and many of you know him. Uh, ben and I have designed experiments to quickly assess where we stand with gene therapy for Angelman syndrome, both in terms of safety and in terms of its potential to benefit patients. I thank you all for your support, and I'm ready to get to work. Mm -hmm.